Hello, everyone, and welcome to the first Mar Brigade podcast. I'm sitting here with one member of my security council, Ego Toxie. Are you can go and say hi if you want to. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Yeah. So we are sitting on around one week since the – was it one or two weeks? I think it's around one week since the health patch release. And I want to interview some of my members and see their thoughts on it and just you know, figure out how they're joining themselves within the Mar Brigade. So you go, what, what are your thoughts on the current health patch? Do you think it's more beneficial for the game, or do you think it's been somewhat of a detriment? Uh, well, I mean, I feel like a lot of guns were uh, unfortunately no longer any good compared to how they used to be, but then you had other guns that just popped up, ending up being really good. Mm -hmm. I mean, stuff like the MG was has been good the whole time, of course, but I've noticed... Uh, some guns that were slept on are way better now. <laughs> For example, the uh, oh, what's what's that one gun that I've been messing around with? That uh, semi-automatic, you could put it on full auto, but I'm not oh, using the, it. The M50 the, Rising. Yeah. That gun is a beast now. Yeah, I mean, I remember even before pre-patch, so people were doing really well with it. I think Crux, either Crux or Warmall, really fell in love with it. Um, yeah, I. I've I've noticed that it's kind of I feel like some elements are definitely good. The whole some of the attachment changes, I feel like I've taken the MP forty somewhat out of circulation and made it a not necessarily a very cost effective weapon when you can just get you know, like a Thompson that you can get all the good attachments from Trader. Oh Even yeah, just the Thompson like, is awesome now. The yeah. uh the MP forty I think is actually not as good as it used to be. Oh yeah, I mean the the attachments are definitely sort of a softener for it. Oh yeah, nine millimeter now does nothing. <laughs> yeah, I still think it's so funny. It's like the other thing that we're gonna oh we're gonna boost the stem and make it viable. Right. Not really. Yeah. No, it's not, not really. Viable. I do like the new armor totals, however, and uh, yeah. I feel like that was something that needed to be done for balancing reasons, mm -hmm. and. uh the fact it has been done is great. I like that they made the radio backpack a little better than the barrel mm -hmm. backpack because who the fuck is walking around with a barrel on their bag? Just saying. I mean, it is. I feel like it's more of a duffel bag than a barrel bag, but yeah. I could definitely kind of see it bag. The Same Book difference. Bag. This is, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It, it's, I don't know. I like the radio backpack. Yeah, and it's a lot easier accessible with missions that you have the tasks where you could get one really easily. And now that yeah. they're bigger, I'd say that's a huge plus for Marauders. Definitely. Um, so moving on from the patch itself, uh, do you have any ideas for what they could do for the next one? Yeah, I, a lot of them, I made a, a tat suggestion a while ago in Marauders Discord about some clan features. But what sort of content yeah. are you really looking for? What do you want improved? I guess the same thing as you really, some clan content would be awesome, some more uh, player involved um, things going on would be nice. Uh, I, I feel like it's there needs to be something that, like obviously the game is great, I've enjoyed every hour I've put into it, I'm sure most of us have and that's why we're here, but I feel like it needs just something to really settle it in, you know? I don't know what that is, but I feel like they're on the right track so far into making it an even better game, but th there needs to be something new that just kind of sparks up the community, because yeah. I was looking on the Steam charts the other day, and there's only like two to 3,000 like average concurrent players. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I do feel like it does kind of suffer from like a Timefall 2 syndrome. I excuse the backwardness. My dogs are barking. Oh yeah, you're all good. With yeah. a uh, with a smaller team that they have, the uh, developers of Marauders, I, I do understand their uh, pacing and mm -hmm. actually getting out that health update when they did was really impressive. Yeah, but I feel like that surged a lot of people into the community, and people just aren't sticking to the game. So yeah. I I think they need to add something that keeps those players interested in the game. I, yeah. I love the zero to hero quests and all that. I love the daily tasks. I feel like there should be a little more objective. Mm -hmm. And that is something I really 
perhaps try to get more of, especially with our internal and lore based quest lines, which we are, you know, sometimes the, which we are actually nearing the objective in my mind for our next event. But I feel like really, because I just noticed today that uh, Battlefield 2042 went to season three, and honestly, of all the initial content for it died down like what got me to finally buy it a month ago was jack bragg's video on it i was like that looks like a lot of fun of course there's a lot of other factors which i've talked with you guys jack bragg's makes most games look fun though for being real. yeah definitely <laughs> definitely um yeah i remember that guy way back in the day playing with frankie and pc mm, yeah i do i remember that i was so <laughs> i was so heartbroken when i realized that frankie did all the stuff script i was like so that's what got me into DayZ. Like, oh, that, same here. It was that was my and Frankie. Mm -hmm. That was my first one. I was like, yo, yeah, it's a thermal? He has a BMP? What? Right, <laughs> it was it the was best. Yeah. And, and, then <laughs> I finally, was... and then I finally got the stamina. I was like, what the hell is this? <laughs> right, right, right. I, I do personally like SATA a little bit more, though. I feel like their, uh, their cooperation works a lot better. Mm -hmm. they, they talk to each other better. It seems like they're uh, better friends and all that. Yeah, but I mean, uh, he came back. Frankie mm -hmm. did. Yeah, like, I noticed that. But then he disappeared again. <laughs> yeah. I, um, we actually do have a lot of Daisy players in here, so you know maybe we do a maybe we do a wipe or do a couple weeks with the boys. You know, we go on like Perhaps. fucking we go on I mean, rearmed uh, or like uh, Christmas break or something. I, I think the Daisy days are long gone. I feel like the first couple of years of standalone was the end of the the big Daisy era. Maybe uh, maybe a couple of years ago with like Daisy RP booming and stuff because mm -hmm. I used to be a part of that. I played that. Yeah, and it was it was a blast. Mm -hmm. But I feel like lately it's been uh it's been slept over for good yeah. reason. It's it's a game that it's has a, it's an old game needed an something old different. Yeah, and it hasn't gotten it. Like adding content isn't the only way to. Uh, like, like adding helicopters, cars, new guns and stuff. That's cool and all, but I don't know. Uh, I'm I'm trying to think of what made Daisy mod so good because that was absolutely fantastic. I put hundreds I mean, and hundreds of hours into that. Yeah. So I didn't play the initial Armor Two mod. Chandler was my first little look at it. Now, of course, when I watched Frankie on I think it was 240, 1080p, it was like it was Armor Two mod. Um, yep, exactly. But, That's how most of this series yeah. was. But it's so I started playing bad. on I started playing on PS4, and that was a very laggy experience. But I oh, feel like we're I'm really so set sorry. the P I feel like we're really set the Daisy Daisy as this like I call it its own game, but I mean honestly, it is a game. It's on the Army Engine, but it's its own game at this point. At that point, at least. Yeah, it definitely was. It like they had their own updates. Mm -hmm. They had their own sh shebang going on over yeah. there and it worked it worked for many years and arma 3 was great too the daisy mod wasn't the same though yeah i feel like if it just then it was really one of the only ones that was really like it because if you had like warlords or no not warlords exile was i know it's a one game where it's like an arma 3 even now exile was an arma 3 yeah yeah okay so, sorry i've never played arma 2 i've only played arma 3 but, oh no, you're all good. Yeah. You missed out on the glory days. <laughs> yeah, I know. I always say I've been born in the wrong generation. Yeah, it's like mm, Daisy Mod first came out. There's not a whole lot like that, but a lot of these major corporations, and the same thing that Marauders is suffering with, is with the new D Warzone DMZ, which I've been playing a lot of, just because I'm a little burnt out. I will man two hundred yeah, hours in the span of. I mean, I've played for almost fifty hours like every Call single of week. Duty yeah. Extraction shooter, like, yeah. That's AAA. That's the first AAA extraction yeah. shooter to ever come out. Yeah. And I mean, honestly, the, I mean, you know, your first extraction shooter was Tarkov, and then you had a couple of knockoffs, and you had like I think it's Cycle Frontier, and that has really changed the mm -hmm. entire sphere of the. Uh, traction shooter experience because there's some people realizing that hey, okay, we can do this, we can make it easier, and it'll work. Then you had more knockoffs, and then you had Marauders. Now, not Marauders isn't a knockoff. I'll tell you why. It's with it's the naval combat and everything. It's my, I mean, it's I like it more than I do Tarkov. You know, I mean, I feel like a lot of people here do yeah. as well, given that we have almost 100 members in our Discord now. 
Oh yeah, it's fantastic. We've grown so much in the past couple, in the past month even. Like we've, well, we've only been around for a month. Yeah, yeah, that's that's fair. But there was like small groups of friends, right? Fair enough. Before yeah. then, yeah. <laughs> but uh, you know, it's 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 going really well for the fifty fourth, and I definitely see a future with everybody. Yeah. Suffice to say, its issue is just that it's sandwiched between a lot of release dates, and I feel like this. The initial die down with the hype is honestly expected. In the latest QA session with the devs, they're saying that they're not. They've sold 200,000 copies of the game. So that's $4 million. Oh, yeah, that's amazing. So, like, that's, a, they, that's a big, that's a big number. Active, yeah, they're an active dev team, too. They're active in their community. They talk yeah. about uh, their game and they take mm -hmm. player suggestions. Like you said, yeah. you hopped in their uh, QA the other day and. Uh, talked about the clan stuff like yeah. the fact they're considering that and took your voice mm -hmm. that's that's a really good yeah. thing for the uh for the dev team to do mm -hmm. and it shows that they care about their player base and they're willing to uh make the game something that they know we will enjoy yeah i mean four million dollars so trust in them yeah four million dollars that's like that's at least another year or two of development and oh, that's yeah, and, and that's and that's it they'd never sell another copy Right. They're gonna Which sell a lot more. Like, yeah, the, the one point over release. I keep looking at, with, you know? I keep looking at Foxhole, which is rifled like almost a thousand hours into. And they released one point Holy shit, the player base exploded. <laughs> Did it? Yeah. I oh tried yeah. Foxhole. I wasn't it was a big fan of it like, actually. Doubled and tripled. I don't know. It might have even been four times. It was ridiculous. Like we had four after shards. It was insanity. But yeah, I have I have full faith that you know they're not gonna be. We were struggling for money, because now I'm kind of like now I'm getting older, yeah, you know, I'm not as naive. I'm really seeing the money side of things, and that they really game that this game games like it will be continue to come out, and they're gonna get better and better. Even just the graphics, like Tarkov has good graphics, I'll admit, but Marauder takes that to another level. Oh yeah, Mara Escape from Tarkov is a realistic military simulator easily. It, it's <laughs> Like, it looks like real life, it feels like real life. You play Marauders, and it's in, you're in space. You're, you're, mm -hmm. you're World War, you're basically World War Two in space. I mean, uh, where can you go wrong with that? Yeah. And they did it beautifully. I honestly think that the thing that Marauders needs right now is some big content creators on it. The only mm -hmm. problem is there's not a ton of content that's unique on Marauders. Yeah. For a lot of content creators, the reason Tarkov is so easy is because you have so many options. Mm -hmm. I but there's not those options because the yeah. game is too new. Yeah, I mean you but, and I even talk. Sorry, go, sorry, I cut you off. Go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say that uh, they're on their way in a good direction, mm -hmm. and I feel like we've got the uh, the the base puzzle pieces. We've got the outer layer depth. We just need all of the the small interior stuff, the yeah. lore, the the better, the more quests, more options, stuff that will actually keep players playing. Because yeah. the game initially is awesome. I still enjoy it. I'm gonna continue to enjoy it for as long as I play it. But I feel like as soon as they have more, not only will the player base go crazy, we'll get those popular streamers mm -hmm. and YouTubers hopping in. They're yeah. Their subscribers and viewers will uh, see the game, we'll be likely to get it. I think it just needs to be publicized a little better, and Definitely. the player base will go way bigger than it is right now. And yeah, that's more money for them, so exactly. they can figure it out it's, and it's add a, something. It's a repeating cycle. Right, if they can add anything that like keeps concurrent players playing the game. Other than the PvP and the stuff that's currently in, like something big. Again, we want we want like, people to be watching this like game, <clears> keeping <throat> their eye on it. Player driven lore. <clears throat> Player driven lore. Which voice uh, Robert does this? Contact me. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> yes, sir. Small small side note. If there are any are any you know content creators who wanna you know hop on the podcast, know this is our first episode, but I have big plans. Well, obviously, I have big plans. So if you guys are interested in coming on here, sharing your thoughts, and maybe taking part in some lore content, or even just fucking around in the capital ship, stay tuned for more info on that later. Um, you know, hit, hit me up, Walker Raiden, uh, Walker Raidenton, 
the, num the little number thing, 7494. That is Walker Redington, hashtag 7494. Also, reach out to me on the YouTube comments of this video. So, moving on to our second to last topic. Do you have any? Can I fit in my uh, two cents real fast? Yeah, sure, go ahead. The, uh... Yeah. All right, for sure. Uh, shout out to Raid Shadow Legends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, moving on to our second to last one. Do you, um, are any thoughts that you want to do, like you have for the devs when it comes to lore? I know that I have talked to them and I actually contacted the, uh, the moderation team after the Q&A. I did get some really mixed messages. I'll pull it up right now and I'll kind of talk about it a little bit. Make the intro cutscene a choice. Nah, this isn't new at this point. <laughs> so, I was talking to them, I was like, hey, talk to one of your devs. We were, we were saying that they wanted to have a very uh, community-inspired and sort of a shared collection of lore when it comes to Marauders. And so some of my guys at the Big Force Marauder Brigade have been working very diligently. We have a few questions for you. Let's get a few off. Does AI exist? Capital sh like ship sizes? A couple other things. Just small things to kind of iron out the kinks and some of the plot. I got a... Again, as mentioned earlier, we have the outer layers of this game, but we need the interior stuff. Exactly. And that's exactly what we're talking about right yeah. there. And then, so my response was, and I quote, Hi Walker, so let me get straight to the point. We're not looking for players to write our lore for us at this time. I'm sorry that there was a confusion from this on the latest Q&A session. We're not going to be sharing any of our narrative design documentation or any of the lore writing that is not currently available in-game. All players should feel free to write or do whatever they want in terms of fan fiction, but should not be considered official lore. This will not be considered an application or submission of lore writing or narrative design. Uh, we have game designers on the team that handle this. We appreciate the enthusiasm, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, What's nice about that message is it implies that they have ideas themselves, yeah, which is great. That means they're they're thinking about it too. Yeah. Of course, they are as developers, but it's good to know that they're uh, letting everybody know that they're they're taking this seriously. They mm -hmm. they got their ideas. They're ready yeah. to bring it to light. Yeah. But I love that they're willing to take in suggestions because mm -hmm. that's huge for any developer. I I definitely think talking yeah. to your players and. You know, they're the people that are making your game what it is. Yeah. So, and might really, as well take their two cents for it, you know? Well, I mean, I'm really glad you brought that up, because when I was reading that, I kind of felt a little slighted, because there I am, like, just asking some basic questions about the lore, and they're just like, no, that's, we're not going to tell you. I was like, I'm just trying, I respond to them saying, I'm just trying to make higher quality fan fiction to increase the presence in the community and try to help out. There's like, we appreciate that, but we're not willing to share any part of our narrative design. Which, as a author and as a writer, who's been writing for fucking four or five years now, and everything from commission work to working with developers like this before, I'm confused by that decision because I feel like if you're trying to make a very, if you're trying to do a story and you're really pushing for that narrative experience, like they said to me multiple occasions, including the Q and A. We said, like, a guy is really dedicated solely to the lore. It's going to be coming in 2023. It's just around the corner. I feel like that's kind of, kind of counterintuitive. What do you think? In a way, I suppose. But again, I'm going to fall back on my point earlier where uh, I think it's a good thing that they said that because, once again, that implies that they have some creative ideas of their mm -hmm. own for it. Yeah. And, uh... Again, in a Q&A, they were willing to uh, answer questions and try to explain what they could. Obviously, there yeah. is stuff they can't talk about because we all aren't supposed to know about that until it comes out. Like, yeah. There's a couple things with this new health patch that weren't mentioned in the uh, notes, the patch notes, but that's kind we of, got that's it anyway. Like, that annoys me. Yeah, ship speed was definitely like I I can guarantee that either my FOV slider being maxed out. Made That's it it's feel it's, like it's, I'm going it's your it's your FOV or... slider. It's your FOV slider because is it? yeah yeah. So the way the FOV slider works is now I forget if this is this man the Unity engine. I don't, I, don't, I uh, I'm gonna sure. I, I want to say no. This is my it doesn't feel like Unity game engine, but. If it if it let's say if it say if it was on Unity, the way it works is you your so you have your character and that's a little beam. It's really like a little white three D beam. 
like a pinto bean. And then uh, yeah, for sure. when you're increasing your FOV, the little camera inside that bean goes further back into the head of that character, the head section, and that increases the angle at which you can see. Now, I don't know it how allows other... you to skull fuck your own character. Uh, yeah, I now I don't know how other engines like Epic or whatever do this. Or Excuse Unreal, my un, un, Unreal, Unreal Engine, Unreal, Unreal Engine. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I don't know how other ones do this, but the FOV is only a field of view. It's changing the angle of what your character sees. Now I've fooled around with FOVs on Minecraft, and it's only like, I have my FOV set to 100. So I can see 100 degrees between each direction. And right, I, feel like, and I, always, I think that's like, a great way to play. <laughs> yeah, I feel like it's like really, I feel like I was going faster. Yeah, it speeds up your game for sure, which yeah. definitely feels really good for Marauders. I think they should stick to the uh, fast-paced combat that they have right now. Because mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of the other extraction shooters, I'm I'm pretty impressed with DMZ's take on it. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I think that their amount of fightable stuff makes the game a lot more fast paced. Yeah, just, but it's it, still it, got nothing on Marauders' speed. Mm -hmm. Marauders is crazy. There's so yeah. many AI, and the players are what make it. You know, it's, yeah, it's great. That's gotta be my biggest gripe with DMZ right now is that the only like. The only real difficulty I see in my average match is the, the sheer amount of AI and shotguns. Shotguns oh, yeah. are it's, annoying. It's so annoying in, so annoying in DMZ. The stacked up armor on oh, just random yes. NPCs that you run into. Like, mm -hmm. You're like just minding your own business and you get shot in yeah. the forehead by mm -hmm. three bots with or three, yep. yeah, three bots with aimbot. Like, yeah. Just well, I mean, chilling up behind a car and you're like, what's going on? And then you the shoot fuck? them in the yeah. head and they don't die. You're like, what? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, moving on to the last topic. So I want to do a new thing in the Marauder game, which is like nominations for Marauder rewards. So we have three categories right now: best shot, biggest rat, and the best. Now, who are going to get the best lap with? No, I have people in mind for all three of these, but you know, I, I want to see which one you would nominate for for them. Okay, best laugh, definitely Meta Knife. Y yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, that I mean, easy. I will admit, I have to like. <laughs> Be really careful about what I post when he's in the Discord. Yeah, for sure. Because like, definitely <laughs> like some not, not even that. Like, his jokes are bad. I, well, I, mean, I can't even say that. Like, I feel like. All right, we all laugh, so they're good. He says that. things <laughs> that like. Yeah, it's. He's something else. <laughs> I I think his out of pocket humor is what makes him really funny. Yeah, and I we definitely kind of feed into that. I do need yeah, to talk he to him has, again about he's it. He's living in Modern Warfare 2's voice chat. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah I, that's what he sounds like. Dude, it's Modern Warfare 2. Calm down. It's like, we're playing Marauders, not Modern Warfare 2. <laughs> You're, calm, calm down. <laughs> calm down, oh, Search yeah, and Destroy. <laughs> yeah, it's like, that's super As funny. As for like, best shot, though, I honestly don't know. We have a lot of top-tier players. We have players in the top 500. We have upcoming players that are really good, but just haven't put yeah. in the time in the game yet. Mm -hmm. It's hard to say, honestly. Um, but I think a lot of our higher-ups in the Discord are uh, really good players, actually. Yeah. I, I mean... I feel like, in my eyes, it'd be Scoose. Even as, like, the couple raids I've played with him, he fucking popped off and was carrying us, so. Oh, yeah. I haven't played with him yet. Yeah, he's really good. Um, what'd you say for the biggest rat? The biggest rat. Um. That's a tough one. I haven't really played with a lot of people that play ratty. Okay, well, it's, and it's, I, I can't say I can't call people that are new at the game rats because you have to play that way to learn yeah. the game. I mean, like, Raz also just like you know scummy meme tactics or like what I'm guilty of is like be, being a little uh, a, a loot gremlin and just like as soon as a bio drops, is like taking all their shit from my teammates. Oh yeah, I do the same I do that thing. all the I time. Think when you're in raid you're in raid for yourself no matter what you come in with a squad you're still trying to get out with the goodies yourself that's how you progress yeah. in the game yeah so I, 
I, I, I mean, like selfishness in an extraction shooter is definitely a good thing. Yeah, well, I mean, to a degree. I mean, at the end of the day, kill rights is kill rights. But if I have a challenge, very true. like if if I have like level ten armor and a level twelve helmet, I'm using an SCG, and you have your little pistol, and you have a you have a Sten in the level seven. It's yeah, you know, as the guy who's better, he actually give you my the loot for my kills so that you can get better armor and stuff. That's just oh that's, yeah, it's 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 not. It, you know, I say the same thing when people – I'm giving out uh, quote-unquote donations to people. I tell them when they don't want to take it. It's like I'm not going to give – I'm not giving it to you because I want to give it to you. I'm giving it to right. you because out, out, self, out of self-preservation because even if even if you're the worst shot in the world, you're still going to take an extra two bullets that aren't going to go on to me. Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah, all your teammates are just, you know, body armor. <laughs> <laughs> who would have who would've known you worked better as a body – as a sandbag than an actual soldier? Hey, everybody's got to start somewhere. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for your time, Nico. If you want to stick around in the, uh, stick around, you can. If not, you can get be on your way. Yep, for sure. I'll stick around for a little bit. All right, man. I'm gonna move you back down because uh, you're supposed to be invited up. So. Uh, okay, my bad. Uh, I yeah. Know fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, those in the audience, go and raise your hand if you want to join in. Menon, raise your hand. Like a respectful young man. Like, like a like a real human being. Crux, what are you doing? <laughs> hey, there we go. He went through proper channels this time. Yeah. Oh yeah. This guy. What does he think he's doing? Alright, huh? so Walker was speaking about human shield. Yeah, bro. Earlier, bro, he gave me that little push I needed. I right? he came here after him explicitly telling me that's me, that's me, that's me. Four times. Like I, I gave you literally all the information, and you still team killed me. I am oh, sorry for yelling at you, though. Yeah. That was kind of oh, uncalled no. for. No, 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 no taking it. That was completely fucking. That was just so pissed. <laughs> yeah. But speaking of which, I got your um hit back. Hmm. Sweet. I didn't notice that. Um. While you're here, I'll go and run you through the couple of the nominations. So, I was asking Eagle here a little bit earlier. What are your thoughts on the uh, this patch we're having, right? The, the health patch. Do you think it's a positive change? Do you think it's more like a 50-50 thing? All right. So, in the beginning, I was kind of pissed off about it because, uh, like, I was having to switch to the new changes they mm -hmm. made because the MP40, yeah. while still being good, it's now not as viable. Yeah, just too expensive with the stock cost of reinforced metal and stuff. However, there is a new MP40, if everybody's not aware. It's uh, currently the resin with, with uh, extended mag and compensator. That's exactly <laughs> what Ego th This <laughs> asset is literally exactly what Ego was telling me. Bro, it hits harder than the fucking SPG. Like, sure, it doesn't have the... Um, oh, yeah. If you got a trigger finger, too, your tri like the semi-auto is crazy because you can shoot faster than the fully automatic. And that gun is already a beast on its own. But, oh, man, if you have a trigger finger, that gun is unbeatable. Yeah. We'll say the recoil on full auto is a little bit hard to manage, but, you know, semi-auto. That's That comes with the compensator. That's why I said I run compensator for the fully auto. Mm -hmm. But, um, sure, it doesn't have the penetrating power, like the double um bullet, the higher caliber. Yeah. It. But it's pretty good. At first, I was I was not liking the update. Like I didn't play for like a straight day. But now that I've gotten used to it, I feel like the changes they have made has um been beneficial, mostly. Yeah. Um. Except for um when you spawn into a raid with um radio backpack, panzer rig, full the fully kitted out suit, and then just your DC to nuke all your shit. Yeah. Yeah, there are still a few gl big uh glitches and exploits that they need to fix. Actually, special message to all the exploiters and hackers out there, like you. We know who you are. We see you every raid. He's a minor too. You'll get caught with the pedophilia charge. Out of pocket. That's why he's. Yeah, a a as we were saying, <laughs> out of like, out of pocket. <sighs> this is the time. Yeah. So, if you're watching, uh, hello YouTube. Um, I uh. <laughs> Uh, fuck. <laughs> fuck you, Menon. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Anyway. Stay tuned until Walker's apology video comes out. 
No, no more, no more speaking for you, Megan. <laughs> Screw you. Uh, radio. You wanna, you wanna do the old talking so we can shame Menon even more. Menon has his hand up. Fuck Menon. <laughs> he doesn't. <laughs> Screw you. <laughs> Speaking of hackers and exploiters, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I need to have you. I need to have you on more. <laughs> uh, um, I guess I'll keep going with you then. See what else. Um, so I heard. So I'm. I'm gonna pull up the. I'm gonna pull up their new uh, map. Well, uh, pre 1.0 release map. Let's see if I can't find it real quick. Oh, yeah, and in the meantime, um, in the near future, there's going to be a new podcast coming out called The Dablands. And, uh, there's going to be a lot of smoking. Uh huh. For you 18 and older viewers, of course. Okay. <laughs> I was like, where is he going with this? Actually, I'm looking through their announcement. Ooh. Oh, yeah. It's I'll just, just it's basically going to be just uh, a lot of talks about, uh, like, what's going on in the world right now. Stuff that needs to be talked about, philosophical stuff. You know, two potheads talking at the same time is hilarious. So, it's, so um, <laughs> side note about that. It's, it's, in the states that they're doing this, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's legal. So uh, YouTube and other uh, people of that sort who are in those positions where they can get my video taken down, this is all uh, fine and legal. Uh, I think it's all fine and legal up in the... Yep, yep. In Tenses. Michigan, it is legal for those of the age 21 and older okay. to uh, possess and use um, uh, the thingy, the uh, the, yeah, the wacky the tobacco, the wacky tobacco, yep. the, gr the the weird green stuff. Ow, shit! Smells Fuck, like I stab my thing. Damn it! Ow. I'd like to hear some radio waste that he has had his hand up for quite some time. I right, know I invited him. That's why it's green. Um, uh, okay. but yeah, I'm looking at their uh, their tweet, the tweet, the. Uh, like uh, the Twitter section of Marauders, and I'm seeing a lot of like those sort of propaganda pieces they have. I think that's super fucking cool. Like uh, lore propaganda type stuff. Oh, um, yeah, it's like where they do their advertisements for the uh, the game. They have like some really nice posters. I'd love to see those in, like a merchandise store or something. Oh so, yeah, like, that would it's, be like, cool. Do or die, etc. Which is really cool. I um, think some merch would be a good. Uh little second gig yeah. <laughs> for a lot of the game makers there are a lot of <gasps> there's a lore theory there. channel what yes 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 yes, yes. <laughs> they changed the lore channel to lore theory and fanfic tell me you wouldn't want a fucking merch that says we serve no man or kingdom country or for yeah. of years, we are marauders. Or... We are marauders. Yeah. Um. <laughs> yeah. Um. Moving in, I actually going to transition to a section about uh, the ongoing lore of the Fifty Fourth Mod Brigade. We are in our uh, Central Intelligence Operation. We finished. We wrapped up our Operation Bricklayer one, one or two weeks ago, and so. If you, so, what are your guys' ideas for up next operations after this? Because my plan is to have an event. Prom maybe depending on who, something maybe next weekend, week after that, just depending on the amount of quest points or lore points everyone achieves. And so I was thinking about. Oh doing yeah, in the yeah. Uh, the event Friday, there yeah. will be a bunch of those going out. Hopefully, mm -hmm. I. Uh... I definitely want it to be a bigger thing. We've only got seven people interested right now. Getting some more would be nice. Eight, We're gonna be. Uh, I'll be here probably. Yep. We're um, gonna have some designated designated squad leaders to uh, lead the squads, and of course, uh, all items and all that that you get in raid can be kept. But uh, lore points are being given out to fifty fourth members. It's gonna be a lot of fun for sure. Yeah. I, again, I wanted to do a, more of a take on the role play and. Uh, the the tactical aspect of the game with an actual squad of players that have yeah. a similar goal. If you boys, girls, or non-gender or genderless beings, whoever you might, whoever you might be, and you are interested in this type of thing, there'll be a link in the description to our Discord. 
you to hop in, get your application done. We will be able to get you in here pretty quickly, and you guys will be able to take part in our awesome events. Um, speaking of events, so what I was thinking about for the Operation Central Intelligence event was kind of, you know, we've, once we receive all the intel necessary ships, it's like, okay, we have found their bases, we're going to execute a mission across these ones here, here, and here. I have a whole map. I have a whole map, I have a whole map and thing planned for it. But then basically, even listen to your capital ships, which I think we have a lot of now. It's oh, like, yeah. It's I've like six or eight of that, them. Uh... It's crazy. We should do some uh, in-game rewards as well. Like yeah. uh, people that are running the events should try and collect some stuff. I've got the jewelry box stash yeah. that I'm making right now, mm -hmm. and uh, I feel like some I good rewards for some. Right. right. <laughs> right. <laughs> like <laughs> give out like thirty biscuit tins. Whoever brings in the most <laughs> biscuits. I only realized like this week that you can actually open them and get biscuits out of them. Like I, I, I thought I thought they was just yeah I thought it was absolutely hilarious. They had one of those was like me me not me because of it, but I was thinking it was like so you go in almost like uh you know the uh what's the term? it's from that so basically AI kills are worth like your basic raider AI security and whatnot is worth one kill is worth like like one point. Uh, commandos worth three majors worth five. Players were no. Okay. Raiders are worth one. Uh. 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 Like. SAS. Worth one. SAS is worth one as well. Security personnel is worth one. All your basic guys worth one. Central Empire commandos could be two. Majors being. Majors and players being worth three. And then captain's key cards being also being worth one point, and basically, yeah. like every death you sustain is worth like ten to twenty points. So it's really like in that amount of time, you have to submit every single end raid screen, and as well as your stats from before the operation, after the operation. Oh yeah, and after but we do have a dedicated staff that's yeah. uh, pretty great at keeping active with our uh, community, and mm -hmm. uh, I think adding some more weekly missions would be a good idea as well yeah. like some stuff that's hard but achievable in a week mm -hmm. yeah if you actually play that's and i feel like just more point rewards would be good for that but i i definitely think that a better rewarding system would be nice if we yeah. could or at least have the uh, lore points do a little more i'm sure definitely. you have ideas for that later yeah. on but... so right now the current quest reward system is kind of filler because I've just re I made the, kind of made a mistake of prestiging, and so I've lost a lot of the money I had, including saving at less than one million, like seven seven hundred grand. So I'm still rebuilding my reserves, as well as pushing for ranks. But I, I want to go back to like you know, after I stop needing money, getting like collecting gold bullions and war bonds and giving out to you guys, and I I want to have something that like tangible rewards. But I feel like kind of the way the current loot system works and you know if it was like tark that'd be like a gpu oh or... yeah it's it's still an extraction shooter yeah. you still yeah. have to get in survive mm -hmm. get out with that stuff and there's no guarantee you're gonna find exactly what you're looking for exactly that's one of the reasons i want to do this uh this event this weekend because i want to be focusing on specific items and trying mm -hmm. to get out of raids with those not only will that build play our players stashes with those specific items, but it will also offer good opportunities for money, um, communication, and again, that yeah. roleplay aspect that I'm so excited for. Mm -hmm. Um, so I have this was my train of thought. Oh yeah, well, like <laughs> I I have regained my train of thought. Haha, -ha, Darwinism strikes again. <laughs> like if it was Tar if so if it was Tarkov, I'm probably doing some like. Like a slick, or like a high piece of armor, or an RSS, that could be another one. Like rare items, like a thermal GPU. But in Tarkov, you know, we have like gold bullion, like SUGs, Panzers, but that's all that stuff aside from gold bullion. Gold bullion is only worth like 36k. So it's like maybe one or two, three gear sets if you're really not going that far, like that expensive. Yeah, I but feel like, like they need to uh, up the uh, loot values in yeah. the. Uh... We need more like, uh, like tangible valuables. 
Yeah. Right, right, right. And yeah. not only in stashes, but also in the vaults. I, mm-hmm. I think because you rarely see gold bullions and stuff like that. High, like what they have right now for high value items, you still don't see a lot of them yeah. in those places. And mm-hmm. those are the places you'd expect them. To yeah, be. I mean, like it's it's super weird, you know, like, G- like things like GPUs, Lightxs, and Tarkov, like with like a million dollars, and they're hard right. as hell to those find. Are massive. But they're like specific and places. There are specific places you can go to find them. Right. In Marauders, it's like you have the dogs, you have the boss. There, what? Everybody is going to the spots where those things are. Mm-hmm. We don't have any value items in Marauders right now. That I mean, we have really the make players. Yeah, but they need some items that are going to lure more players yeah. towards the vaults. Because I've been noticing lately, especially, people aren't even bothering with the vaults anymore. Yeah. They're just doing it for the PvP. Mm-hmm. Um, if they want this to be a successful extraction shooter, I, I definitely, at least if they're going in the terms of like it being a big loot system and stuff like that, I feel like they do need some better options than mm-hmm. what they have now. But that yeah. just comes with content updates. It's a new game. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, yeah. it cut them some slack a little bit. Tarkov's been out for how many do. years and they're still dealing with issues? Like, I mean, the amount of hackers in Tarkov is crazy. Some of, oh, com- yeah. like, some of the clips I, and the videos I've seen. The hacker community cool. right now in gaming is absolutely massive, and it's booming too. It's getting even bigger, and it's unfortunate for uh, gamers that don't like to uh, get into the exploits and cheating and yeah. stuff. I mean, and honestly, they pop in and get shot in the head yeah. by an invisible person flying around. Mm-hmm. And as, I mean, as someone who's interested in going to cybersecurity, you know, I've, I've I've been studying this, and it's like. We're all, it's, we all act as like the cybersecurity and people like who, who are working against the act, like working against hackers. It's very much, we're very much always on the defensive. My, uh, something akin to, uh, trying to, it's like, I kind of parallel it to Russia, like, we're, we're, like early Operation Barbarossa. It was like, it's onslaught after onslaught after onslaught of more and more advanced technologies, but every time we're having to, we can sometimes we get beat. We normally we do get beat at first, but we have to like up our infrastructure and increase its quality to combat our enemy as they're also evolving. Oh yeah, which, absolutely. Which it's, I feel know, like it's, right now that could be one of the bigger industries in entertainment culture. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> just I, I feel like a new anti cheat engine needs to come out that actually yeah. gets the job done because a lot of the older big names, the one like Easy like, Anti Cheat, Battle Eye. Yeah, mm-hmm. easy anti cheat. That stuff was good like five years, five plus years ago. But as of recent, again, as you mentioned, with with hackers getting new ways of actually getting into the game files and not being detected, yeah, it's a lot harder to catch those players, and that's why we're seeing so many of well, them well, because I mean, our anti cheat engines yeah. aren't doing so, what they're supposed to. When you download the files, you get so the files are offline. You can move you can move files on like an offline hard drive. Or is it completely disconnected from the servers? So once you're on that hard drive, you like they can do whatever they want with it, and you can't do anything about it. Now the issue with anti cheats is that the way to combat those is you have to like actively search on malicious content in everyone's computer. You never know if they're a hacker or not. Now someone's like easy anti cheat. It's like it's hardware bans, and those are very very difficult and very expensive to work around especially for like, your average show who's hacking oh, like call yeah. of duty it also, it also breaks some privacy regulations I'm it, sure, yes too, if they were to do that. that's a, that that's really a big thing mm-hmm. like where do we draw the line between like security and but also that sense of privacy in your own home and also like what if you find well, you what, 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 what if you find something else you're like be... what if you find you know, some 18 plus stuff that you're not supposed to have, or I don't know. So it's all the time like terrorists using Xbox, like Xbox, Xbox party chats. Well, there used to, I heard a story a while ago about that. It's like, if you're monitoring that stuff, what do you do with the extra information you have on hand? Some people are just going to sell right. that to advertisers. Oh yeah. Other, like, do you have a legal requirement to report that? You know, like, where do you draw the line between responsibilities and Taking care of hack like your average you know Call of Duty hacker versus the real deal who's just like DDoSing games like Timefall hackers where they took took down Apex servers for days on end. 
I feel like if they stopped giving players the options to play online base game, um, th- like they can't access their uh, their files on the actual game. If there was a way to do that, I feel like that would help stop the cheating. If you had only an mm-hmm. offline mode where you could still mess with the uh, features of the game through the files, mm-hmm. but at your own discretion. So you're thinking more of like how Minecraft has it? Uh, yeah, I Actually, guess in a way. Yeah. So the like, issue if the isn't working, yeah. then something else needs to be done for sure. I think it's I think you were t- talking about like um something like the old Stadia system where you had access to the game online, but not on a hard drive. So like you logged into your Stadia account, you played the game, but you didn't have it downloaded. Where you, like you had to download, you had to have a subscription to, to play it. Having a system where yeah. having a system where you're accessing files on a different system. Like a, like a server, but then also exactly, stuff like, yeah. for like other hackers that get into it, executing other applications, the thing that work for that is you have to limit the application you can use, but then the amount of applications you have with task manager is, it's, it gets ridiculously complex when you try to fix it. Oh yeah, that's, so. that's a whole Easter egg hunt right there. <laughs> Anyway, moving back to the topic and trying to dig ourselves out of the rabbit hole. <laughs> whole yeah, tangent about like hackers so and cyber security. <laughs> going back to so, like with gold billion is worth like thirty six thousand dollars. I if I go hit, you know, three hit two or three uh um those little satchel docs cases I call them, I make yep, more yep. than that. And they it doesn't make sense. You know, gold billions are very concentrated and valuable, I know, but it's not that valuable. A Lidex is worth like 1.2, sometimes 2.5 million rubles in Tarkov. Right, which is if like... you take the slot space for, a f- uh, let's say, just one full stack of gold coins. It's 25 grand. Right. And like... that's one slot. Mm-hmm. Out of the two slots, if you had two full stacks of uh, gold coins... From a raid, it would be more than the gold bullion. And realistically, if you have eight gold coins, they're not the size of the gold bullion. And if you're thinking of value of the actual material, which is why yeah. cert- like gold is better than silver, silver is better than copper it, or bronze. It, it's because it's because of what it is and yeah. the gold bullion is a big ass slab of fucking gold i it, that should be worth more like than several two hundred slots thousand. full of gold yeah. coins exactly mm-hmm. yeah i like, need to change values yeah I, I feel like the uh the quest the zero to hero quest returning the gold billion should be more like the uh the uh the, the bitcoin farmer quest line from mechanic and tarkov you're turning in like if there's like two or three jeep like graphics cards I know it's like that's like a million that's like a million bucks right there. That's fucking oh, expensive. Yeah. And you the, know what? You bring up another good point. One of the reasons Tarkov is really good for a lot of players is the hideout. They have oh, extra yeah. objectives that mm-hmm. can benefit them in, in the game. And yeah. that's something that you can't just max out immediately with yeah. a bunch of money. You need to actually go into raid find stuff. So I uh. think Something like that would be good, but also it has to not cross the barrier of copyright. Well, so the copyright law is like, as long as it has three major differences, it's fine. Like, Marauders has all his bases covered. World War II weapons, oh, yeah. uh, naval warfare, rotating traders, uh, standardized quest line, and like, there's, it's, it's fine, trust me. It, it's all, it's, it's covered all spaces. And there's oh, more, yeah, there, there's 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 culprits who are much more closer to that line of copyright infringement, like Psycho Frontier, than Tarkov. Oh is. yeah, that game is like it, it's literally like it's, it's just like a, it's a more it's like a sci-fi version of Tarkov. I know some people like it. I hate it. I do not like it at all. I personally dislike that game very much so as well. Yeah, but one way I think you implement like a hideout esque system is, as well as you know, sorry, I'm getting a little congested. <laughs> good. Uh, it, it focuses more on the long term. Yeah, I mean, I'm thinking given that the devs are saying they don't want to do a, like a, a wipe wipe, giving players like letting players you know use their progress, you know, this prestige and everything, which I which something I like, something that Tarkov really needs. Yeah, should, I think that Tark, with Tarkov the should take a lesson out of their system, book. 
Yeah, you, you, we shouldn't need wipes if there's a prestiging system. Mm -hmm. It wipes all your stuff for you. <laughs> yeah, a normal wipe that just wipes everything would just. What's the point of actually progressing in the game, prestiging multiple times? Yeah. I even think now prestiging isn't worth it. Yeah, you, you don't really gain much from it except for a few mm -hmm. cosmetics. They have I, said. I feel like if there was more of an incentive. Yeah, you know, they have said that they want to give more reasons for prestige. And I think that there's the uh, tokens are used to unlock your craft, your your crafting, uh, like your armors and stuff. When you craft them, is skill points, not yeah, craft, yeah, not those... not like not like crafting points. So they're, I'm thinking they're going to implement some sort of crafting system. There or you go. That's skill, another thing skill from system, Tarkov skill system. that's really yeah. good. Skills like, like and stuff and that you could fight yeah. going in raid and playing the game. Your skills will rise and, and it like, will make your I actual experience I really, better. really, really hope that they don't. Have it like Tarkov does, where it's like you can increase your magazine reload speed. Because that really going to crush the spirit of like newer players versus someone like me and us who we've been playing since like almost launch date. So what I'm thinking oh, is, yeah. like, and I think I talked to you about this before, was things like uh, what? Um, decreasing crafting time, uh, increasing your the but like the. Uh, Discount from traders, and other little small, like smaller things. Like I don't know, maybe get like if that spend like 100, 200 skill points, get an extra bro storage. Like small things that like it gets exponential with time. Whereas like it's oh yeah, it's, or like uh for a one percent increase or half or like point five percent increase in this stat, you 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 have to spend like ten to twenty skill points. And that's oh, yeah. like that's gonna be a major. Skill at skill point sink, and you could also use that as a money sink. Agreed, because once you get all your uh, crafting blueprints done, you just stack up like mm -hmm. hundreds of thousands of skill points, and you, there's nothing to use them on. Yeah. So they're just building as you level up, and you're like, "What do I do with these yeah. now?" You can't yeah. do anything. But now, one thing Marauders has done good is not doing the different like categories of single ammo types. Yeah. Because it, it one thing it, that makes Tarkov difficult is you can't start late wipe and have an easy time. Yes, and that, and that definitely hurts player has, numbers. Exactly. Yep. They can't get new players in the middle of wipe because the players are too scared. It's already a hard game. Now like, they so have changed that. They did have it where the uh, sorry to cut you off, but the raider is now spawned with BT ammo. So reserve is a good way to get the higher tier ammo rounds early game. Oh, yeah, but that's it's also that's really reserve, it's so it's hard as shit to get those kills with players. Right, and the extracts on reserve are really it can be difficult to uh, navigate and get to. I think that the uh, but the fact that Marauders isn't doing that is fantastic because a new player can pop in and have just as much luck in raid if if they pick up a gun or have to craft a gun, at least they know it could be reliable for killing a player that's been mm -hmm. playing for six hundred hours. Yeah. I mean, that's a stretch, of course, but yeah. it, it makes it so then new players can hop in and not get their shit rocked in the first few seconds of the raid. Mm -hmm. um, I do think, you know, saying that we could way to implement the whole hideout system was, and I touched with this uh, in my suggestion in Marauder's Discord, which I'll probably link in the description as well, um, is having, like, station, like, a station that you can, so you join, like, a you can you can sell your soul to one of the factions, get access to their station, or stations, and it's like for every it's the fourth Mar Brigade. We have like eighty members now. For every twenty players, you can have a station. And that station affords you an area of influence around an area, like in a game called Starborn. Look it up. Um, <laughs> and like as you level it up, it's very resource intensive. You need motor oil for fuel. You need reinforced metal to like routine repairs. Like, there's a lot of cash and resource sinks that would be useful and give a source of content for larger groups. And then having that sort of like like attritional style of warfare as we often see in World War One, which is where this game draws it some of its influence with factions and war and guns from, giving them well, some of the more eager players and their source of content and then taking like clash of clans, clan battles, and having ways to butt heads over territory. Maybe get some special rewards in this. Really building the universe would be a fantastic way to get a lot of kill a lot of birds with one RPG. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> it's so. true.
there's a lot of possibilities and ways you can really get a lot of this done. Now, of course, if we do implement that, it's going to kind of move away from its source of it as an extraction shooter. Mm -hmm. But it could also include some of those more clan-based people and, like, mush together a couple of different communities. Like DayZ, as we were talking about, it's kind of dying out. But those hardcore clan people, they just want to Oh, play. yeah, they, they're they the ones like, that stick to the they game. They don't give those a shit. The players that yeah. will keep playing no matter what happens. Mm -hmm. It's like, not only bring and it brings new players into the game, yeah. too, because people see these big groups and they're like, ooh, I want in on some yeah. of that action. That it's, gets the player it's base going even more with dedicated yeah. players. Mm -hmm. I, I was talking about this video of, uh, it's called uh, How Many Works on YouTube. And they made videos like Eve Online's literally a billion dollar battles with because uh, you can. You can spend real life money to get uh, Plex, which you can sell for around two million isk, which is their version of like their standardized currency. Per, it's very much pay to win. Okay, but, yeah. Like it's such an economy of skill; it doesn't even matter. A lot of people just pay to win. It's I used to do that, um, <laughs> but having, of course, not doing pay to win, but having those videos like that really brought in a lot of players. They got a lot of views, and I'm like, have, you know, again, content creators. It's going to be a very big way to bring in those extra players that are going to increase the community size and whatnot. I definitely agree with that. Yep. I do feel like they should also see about differentiating the player skins from the AI skins yeah. a little more. Because mm -hmm. that, I've noticed, can be a big problem for a lot of newer players. They'll mm -hmm. see an AI and it looks exactly like their buddy. They get shot. Or they shoot, and it is their buddy, <coughs> and, then, and they thought it was an AI, and then you've got a team kill, and then people they're, complaining. They're it's, bitch. Yeah. Right, it's a big mess, and that could easily be avoided with a creative take on yeah. these uh, AI. Yeah, um, I was a suggestion that like, using a radio backpack would give, you know, is a radio backpack used for centralizing short and long-range communications between different squads, platoons, and other groups of soldiers. Could give you a little heads up display of like this is where your friendly, this is where your friend is, etc. Of course, it's very far out there, and maybe it's getting that sort of very casual, more hand holdy type of extraction shooter like Cycle Frontier, which is more of the like a Tarkov light, what the devs were going for. When I talked to when I was watching a YouTuber by the name of General General Stam, he was talking to the devs. And that's what oh yeah, they're, General they're, they're going great. for a. They're going for a Tarkov light s because they played Tarkov two time intensive. They wanted to change a couple of things, make it better. Oh yeah, I think the hardcore challenge for Tar hardcore or Tarkov is a uh, really good step in that direction too. Mm -hmm. um, of course, it's a player made challenge, but I feel like again, back to some of the first points we made in this podcast, uh, the player ideas are like that's what builds a game. That would that's what the developers put out the the format and the platform to play their game on and the players are what make it. Uh -huh. Alright, well I'm all out of talking points. So unless you have something else you want to talk about or any or any of uh, anyone in the audience wants to let me wrap this up here. Yeah, I think uh I think I've said everything that needs to be said. Um yeah, close out by saying uh this is kind of a uh, a pilot episode of this. I really enjoy recording this. I think it's a good chance to really get into more depth, more uh, lengthy and um, in intellectual and kind of detailed conversations with my members to really learn about them and their interests. And also just talking about the game that we all love and participate in. Um, so depending on what this does in the algorithm, I may do more, I may do more we do them once a week, we do them every few days. I'm kind of leaning toward the every few days thing, depending on how what the interest is. Just because, you know, maybe maybe this ego is the only one who wants to talk with me. You know, it's very likely to change if that's what happens, because I'm a very uh well, I'm a very special person. Unless yeah, if you've been around me, you know this to be true. Um but regardless, if uh, if you guys want me to want more of this, give me a like. Me comment because my channel is just like left the algorithm for whatever reason. I was pulling like a good hundred views every like 30, 45, 105 views in my shorts. YouTube videos are pulling 
25, 20 views, and now I'm not really on the algorithm anymore. Oh, yeah, that's been a struggle for any content creator starting yeah. up, I believe. It, I mean, the algorithm is out of whack. It, it's made for yeah. specific people, and you got to do it specific ways, or you're not going to yeah. get what you need from it. Yeah. It's it, tough. It's a it tough does, industry. Yeah. It does say a lot about society. It was easy. It does oh, say yeah. a lot about our society. It's like one of my favorite channels, Generation Tech. They do a lot of Star Wars content, like Star Wars breakdowns, and you're like, oh, my. Mm -hmm. Oh, I I can't say enough good things about them, um, but they're being punished by algorithm too. It's trying to do like shorter and shorter videos. I seen them like do like the same video four times in four different sizes, trying to figure out where the algorithm is going to perform best. Then they're having to do like, you know, like go with these advertisers that I would never would have used before. Of course, I say that's bad advertising. They're not going with bad advertisers like Ray Chatterlights or anything. <laughs> but, but they, they wouldn't have done. They wouldn't need to do sponsorships otherwise. Oh yeah, need, for sure. But I don't need to do that now, though. And it's because of the way the algorithm is set up, where the more I need faster-paced content, more content, only through good moments, which hurts me as a content creator, because even though I do one-minute snippets, the good bit is until like the last 20, 30 seconds, and so I lose a lot of my viewers in that first half-minute chunk. I don't have time to go and cut all that down because I go through like 30, 50 gigabytes of recordings every couple, every two days, and I don't have oh, a lot yeah. of time. You I'm I, I'm in high school. For an editor. <laughs> oh gee, how would I have thought of that? No, like I've been asking for one for the last two weeks. You might be asking in the wrong place. If you... I don't have money for an editor, man. <laughs> like I'm broke. That's fair. <laughs> it's and like I want to learn, but money eh. buys happiness. Don't care who you are. I mean, yeah. Mo look, I will admit, if if a money so m money, so working gives you money. Money gives you dog. Dog gives you happiness. Therefore, working gives you happiness. Yep. And money exactly. gives you happiness. This is definitely a conversation for another day, though. <laughs> We're right, falling well, into the rabbit hole again. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Well, what is like four or five of them now? Oh yeah, there's been a couple. All right, well, <laughs> We're just falling for, in pit traps. Yeah. Thank you guys for tuning in and uh, stay safe and and, wa and watch the yeah. skies because I am coming for you. <laughs>